Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and today we are in the garage because we are doing another DIY Wednesday. We have a good one. We are going to turn someone else's trash into our treasure. Now, I know this may not go along the lines of the whole 2020 organize, what have you, but who doesn't need a chair? That's all I'm saying. I picked up this beauty on the side of the road. While it doesn't look amazing now, we're gonna make it look amazing. That, that's my hope. I really like the shape of it. I just, I just dig it. The wood looks a little like maybe they kept it outside and it got rained on and weathered, but it doesn't look damaged. It just looks weathered and worn. This faux leather pleather fabric has got to go. So we are going to spruce up all the wood. We're gonna sand it, we're gonna paint it. We're gonna rip off all of this horrible fabric and then fingers crossed the underneath doesn't look too bad so that we don't have to really repair that aside from maybe putting like a new clean piece of batting on it. And then we're gonna recover it and it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be so amazing because I decided that I wanted a chair that didn't really go with anything in my house. I wanted a chair that was like kind of loud and outspoken and when people walk in like, that's a cool chair. I wanted something like bright and this crazy pop that would be unexpected. And I thought, what better way to do that than on a chair that I found on the side of the road? So I went right over to the Joann's and I picked this beautiful but crazy colored fabric. It's got hot pink and lime green and orange and yellow and light pink and like a Bluey, I love it. I was completely inspired by this. And then I went over to the Lowe's and I got some paint because I wanna paint the wood. I wanna sand this down and then I'm gonna paint it. And so the paint I got is actually a lime green. It's gonna pull out the lime green in the fabric. Who doesn't want a freaking lime green, crazy floral print chair in their house? No one. Everybody wants that. So we're gonna make it today on this DIY Wednesday video. When re-covering any piece of furniture, I personally leave the shit fabric on until I'm actually ready to get rid of it and replace it with new fabric. So I'm gonna leave the crap fabric on during the entire sanding, painting, all of that process. First off, we gotta sand it. So I have, oh geez. <laughs> You just press this and it starts to go. And I grabbed it like that, nice and hard, and it just turned right on. So I have my trusty palm sander and some sandpaper, and we're gonna go ahead and sand this chair's wood to a really beautiful finish, to where no one knows that we found it on the side of the road. Because the wood on this chair is pretty beat up, I'm gonna start with a really coarse sandpaper. 80 grit is fashioned to my palm sander. I'm gonna go over it with 80 grit and then go down to a finer grit from 80 to 120 and see how good we get the wood looking. We have to have the wood looking really, really good because we're gonna paint it. So any imperfections in the wood, they will show up under our paint. So while tedious, we wanna take our time sanding so that we can get the wood looking super, super smooth. So let's sand. I have sanded it the majority with my 80 grit sandpaper. As I was going along, the chair feels pretty loose. There are screws here and here. That feels pretty loose. And then also like the arm joints kind of feel loose. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna have to take it apart, finish the sanding and then put it back together so that it's more sturdy, which is what I didn't wanna do at such an early stage in the project. But sometimes you just never know, especially when you find something on the side of the road, what the condition is gonna be until you start getting in there. So I'm gonna get my screw drill situation and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've got my trusty drill with my screw bit in. There's kind of a part of me that wants to just be like, can you just push the screws in tighter and tighten it? Let's flip it. Cause I mean, these screws look like they're damn ready to come out. Kind of work. 
But then there's a part of me that's like, you might want to just take it out anyways because you got to sand under here. I know. Come on, Sherry. Lazy Sherry, non-lazy Sherry. That's what you're working with right now. Lazy Sherry would just screw it back in and deal with it. And non-lazy Sherry is like, let's do it right. You want to make this chair amazing, don't you? And the answer is yes. So I'm going to unscrew it, I think. Save the screws. I don't have screws that look like this, so. Oh my God, so many gross cobwebs and stuff. This will make it easier for us to sand this, to see like, look, good sanding, not so great sanding. And then I can get some wood glue up in here and that would be good. See, it's gonna make it easier for us to recover this as well. So good. Taking it apart is a good thing. Oh geez, tell me there is no pleat on that side. Oh, I'm getting, actually, now I'm getting more excited about it. This will make it easier for us to get a really good sanding job. Arm slash leg pieces are off, which makes it easier for us to sand the underside. So I'm gonna finish the underside with the 80 grit, and then I'm gonna go in with the 120 to really smooth it up. And then we'll take a look at like, do we need to put some wood glue in some joints? We need these to be sturdy. We want people to be able to sit in it and have it not collapse. We might as well like check it all out from all angles. Okay, so I took my time and I sanded everything nice and smooth. First with my 80 grit sandpaper and then I went back with 120 grit. I'm happy with the way the legs turned out. But, like I mentioned, look, that's really loose. This side isn't so loose, but I can see where someone tried gluing it again. There's like glue blobs there. And then this one, not as loose, but still pretty loose. And it goes back and forth, like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Almost like it's loose in here. So this could be a bad idea, but I want to get more wood glue in these joints here. So <laughs> I got a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, so that I can chip away these wads of glue in here. And then I got a hammer so I can gently and get the arm away from the leg. Because again, we want this sturdy. It may have been on the side of the road, but it's gonna be beautiful. So we should do it. And, and you know, you're like, where's Lazy Sherry that we really like? That's just like, it's fine, put it back together. She's here. She's on this shoulder saying, just fucking put it back together, lady. And really the lazy one's like, don't you wanna paint it? Don't you wanna see the paint? I do. But then good non-lazy Sherry is like, you're gonna make this chair look so fabulous that the before and the after is gonna be insane and you wanna keep it forever. So let's try to do it right. And doing it right means tightening up those loose joints. So that's what we're gonna do. Clearly, I don't wanna damage it and then break the whole damn thing and then I have no chair and DIY is over because it all needs to go in the trash. But I wanna get this away. Oh, oh, there, there's a good one. It's kind of like at this point, do whatever. Oh, that was a good piece. Do whatever you need to do to get this apart. This is when I'm worried, like, stop what you're doing. You're gonna break the whole chair. Okay, that came out. Okay, so if this one doesn't come out, at least I can get wood glue in that. This feels good here. This and this feel nice. I'm glad that came apart. Now let's check this chair. The front feels good, back loose, and these feel loose. Will this just come apart like the other one did? Yes, okay, perfect, that's good. Oh yeah, check it. Glue, 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 everywhere glue. Everything, everything is getting glue. Now I just really wanna take the whole thing apart and re-glue everything so I know that everything is secure. Let me see if I can get the rest of these pieces apart and re-glue everything. Okay, so the answer was no. I couldn't get any more without like really using some muscle and then I was worried that I might break something. So I'm just gonna re-glue the parts that easily came apart and then assume that the rest of it that didn't easily come apart is sturdy enough. Tight bomb wood glue, let us so much. Put a dab in here, sit this back in tight. Press down firmly. All right, I'm loving it. Wipe off that excess glue. Give it a chance to dry. I'm really mad I couldn't get this peg out. It's okay. I'm gonna put this peg into this one. Wood glue's amazing. It goes like 
this. Boom. Put some more glue in here. I need to make sure it goes down all the way. Squeezing. Squeezing and pressing. Now I just gotta let it dry before we fuck with it anymore. We are good and secure. We can wipe these down and then we can paint. I have a just a little uh, microfiber towel and just a little brush to get off a good amount of the excess sanding dust and then we'll paint. A, I don't wanna paint it and have to like hold and then this part's wet and then I have to hold here and then how do I lay it? So I put together a box and my hope was that it would hold it. Oh, it does. It holds it enough to where I can paint it and then let it dry. When you are painting furniture, there is a correct way to do it. And there's the lazy sharing way. But we've been doing so good and we've not been lazy at all. We're gonna actually paint the correct way. What you have to do, light coats and lightly sand in between each coat. I hate it, I rarely do it. But with furniture, it does make a difference. I can't wait to get a coat of paint on these. It's gonna be amazing. Take special care, be dust free, because now is where all your flaws will come out. So I'm gonna use a little roller to get the smoothest. But first, the parts that I can't roll, it's almost like when you're painting your walls and you have to cut in from the wall to the ceiling. I'm gonna use a paintbrush and cut in all the areas that I can't use a roller on, and then I'm gonna roll it on. Let's open the paint, cause I'm excited. I remember last time I bought paint, they were nice and they gave me a paint key and I don't remember where I put it. We're back to the old opening a can of paint with a screwdriver, but this time they were nice and gave me a stir stick. One day we gotta organize this garage, really. Don't forget, this is lime green paint. It's an accent chair. I kind of wanted it wacky. <gasps> oh my God. I'm so excited for this. Oh, it looks good. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be amazing. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Light coat. Don't clump it on. We don't want any drips. So you get the gist, I'm painting. Okay, cutting in, done. Let's pour this in. Oh, this color is great. Let's roll. Oh yes. Looks so good. I'm so excited. Ooh, 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 and I just can't hide it. Coat one is on. This one is already dry. I'm going with my second to the last finest grit sandpaper. This is 220. It is a very fine sandpaper and I'm going to lightly sand and you can kind of tell after your first coat some imperfections. So we're just gonna lightly, lightly sand those imperfections off and make coat number one as smooth as we possibly can before we put on coat number two. Probably don't wanna be doing this next to the arm that isn't fully dry yet. You also probably wanna have a dust-free environment, not like this shit show of a garage I've got going on from all the wind and stuff that's blown in leaves and whatnot, but you know, whatever. Officially lightly sanded both legs. Now I have dampened my microfiber towel because I want to really get all of that fine sanding dust off of here before I go in with coat two. Again, it's super tedious, but the outcome is going to be fabulous. You're gonna appreciate the fact that you took the time, you sanded, you waited patiently, I promise you. I did bring out, you might've seen some painter's tape because these legs have these like metal things to them, which I probably am going to spray paint and not leave rusty. I should have taped them off before painting the first coat because I was having to be very careful. So I decided get some painter's tape and tape these legs off so you don't have to be so careful and then paint coat two. Exactly the same, if not better, than you painted coat one. Because as we get these coats layered on and layered on, it's kind of like, you know, when you crumb coat a cake. If it's nice and good and smooth, when you do coat two, it'll even be better. Just take your time. Now that I have this all wiped down, I can rub my hand over everything and be like, yeah, that's smooth. So coat two, here we come. I'm actually pretty proud of myself. 
Unlike the sherry that you've all come to know and love, I really spent a lot of time making Coke 2 look as good as possible. It is drying now. As much as I want to, I'm not rushing the process. If you're painting wood furniture, just take your time. You'll be so much happier with the end product, I promise you. And once this dries super, super good, then I'm going to sand it with the super duper extra, extra, extra fine 320 grit sandpaper. This is a whole new Sherry. She's doing things right. Don't know yet because I don't know what it's gonna look like once I do the super fine 320 sanding, but I have a feeling I'm gonna do a third coat. Uh, it looks so good. I love the green. I can't wait to do this. That's why I wanna move on and do this, but I don't wanna touch anything. Because if this knocks over, I'll be pissed because I very meticulously painted coat too. We'll probably just wait for it to dry. Okay, so because I couldn't take it, <gasps> you've gotta be fucking kidding me. I moved the chair things and they were totally fine. And for no reason whatsoever, they just knocked over. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Hold on while I kill myself. Okay, crisis averted. For some lucky reason, the part that they fell on was actually dry. No damage was done to my paint job that I can see right now. There was no reason for them to fall. They were totally stable. But the reason I moved them, I wanna start taking apart this chair. If you remember when we had to redo the bottom of Davis's desk chair, I just need to remove a bunch of staples and get this get this off of here. I've decided the best way to take out the staples is just to get a flathead screwdriver. Sometimes you might need a hammer to like get it under there, depending on how tight they are, and then take out the staples. This chair is actually, I get it, not everybody is a DIYer. Not everybody can see the potential in something that has gone to shit, but this chair actually has some good bones. The springs and stuff, that's nice. I mean, there's cobwebs and there might be black widows in there, but whoever owned this did not need to put it on the side of the road. Lucky me, they put it on the side of the road and now it's mine and I'm gonna turn it into something fabulous. So. I'm gonna take out all of these staples, just gonna sit here and strip away everything so we can see the bones of this chair. And I'm hoping, hoping, hoping the padding and everything is good. I'm gonna spray the shit out of it with some Febreze and some maybe Lysol antibacterial stuff because who the hell knows? So let's do it. Okay, I have, I think, all of the staples out from the bottom. Here's what I noticed. There's more fabric underneath this brown pleather. So someone recovered, which I do a lot. I'll recover something over other fabric if the other fabric maybe is just stained. I gotta take this off and I'm really nervous about it because as I was taking out staples, little spiders were coming out everywhere. What is this? Oh yeah, that, okay, that was a dead spider carcass. <laughs> Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, oh my God, black widow nests. Okay, when you find shit on the side of the road, be real careful. You never know what's in there. Oh God. I know, you're all thinking, why the fuck are you bringing this into your house? Don't worry, we're gonna clean it up. Okay, good. Now, what I wanna do is see what the hell is going on under here. Look, peachy fabric. And then what is with this? This piece of leather or whatever that serves zero purpose. Someone took time to do this. I'm sure at one point it was pretty nice. What's happening here? How is this connected? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, I guess this is ripping off. I'm gonna have to rip it. I was hoping not to rip it in case I needed to use this as a pattern of sorts, but I think I'm just gonna have to rip it. Oh, look, 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 look. Oh, look. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, really, the peach is not bad. See, you just don't know what you're getting when you pick stuff up off the side of the road. Okay, I did it. And this chair has been through it. 
someone, when they decided to recover it, decided to punch a hole in the back and then get at the inner workings of the chair here and staple the pleather fabric to here. There's the burlap. I'm gonna, I mean, seriously, I gotta get this peach off and then I have to vacuum sanitize but this peach is so interesting. It's almost as if someone wanted to recover this chair but didn't have a sewing machine or a staple gun and hand sewed like a slip cover, which is so interesting to me. But I'm, I gotta get this off. I can't cover my beautiful, cute fabric over the top of this, especially when there's a fucking gaping hole in the back of it. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, I did it. <laughs> The bones of this chair are actually pretty good. First of all, I haven't uncovered a chair that has used this type of batting before and it has held up nicely. So as I'm uncovering it, I'm like, what if this is some vintage, you know, everybody always throws out mid-century modern. I don't really know. And I didn't see any markings on it anywhere. This is the back of the chair. You can see it's a nicely made chair. I know, I wish there was like a name or a stamp or something. That would be kind of cool. Not that it's worth anything now because it's been covered over and over again and I just ripped it to shit, but it still would be kind of cool, right? I'm gonna let this air out overnight. You know, spray some Lysol and some Febreze on it. I'm going to go to the Joann's because I kind of want to put a nice layer of new fresh batting over the top of this before I put my fabric on. You're gonna be jealous. This looks good. This is gonna be exciting, like really exciting. It is day two of our trash to treasure chair. I have finished painting very meticulously, might I add, the leg arms. I ended up doing three coats of the green. Then I just quickly sprayed a clear coat over the top. I want those good and dry by the time I'm ready to put them onto the chair. The other thing I did to this chair was took out the 85,000 million staples from all around, cleaned out the inside. Last night, there was a giant black widow that came out. I killed that. I sprayed antibacterial disinfectant all over the chair last night. Febreze all over the chair last night. Flea spray all over the chair last night. Carpet cleaner all over the chair last night. It's good and disinfected because I just actually sprayed flea spray again. I feel confident we're good and disinfected. The chair smells lovely now, no bugs, everything's good. We're ready to upholster. Yay! I did go to the Joann's this morning and I got this polyfill batting. Polyfill makes it sound like stuffing, but it's not. It's a, it's a roll of batting. $16.99. This is a 45 inch by 60 inch piece, but it was 60% off. I mean, this fabric is upholstery fabric, but the background of it is white. So I went ahead and went with white. So I just need to cut it to size, staple it around, done and done. Look, already so much better. I forgot to mention, there's some pretty cool stuff about the chair. When I was taking out all the staples, there was this little piece of cardboard. It's completely ripped to shit. This was on the chair. Any of you detectives out there, maybe we could find something out about this chair. On the wooden base was the name Miller. Mm-hmm, yeah. So, detective that shit and tell me what you find. Here we are with our batting in the joint part of the chair. You know, very technical tools here. I have a Sharpie. I'm gonna use that to shove this batting into where the seat back and the seat seat meet because on the back side, this space right here, I noticed that's how they brought the fabric through and then they stapled it to this wood here. So that's all I'm gonna do, really. I'm gonna shove this in, staple this to the top and to the sides, do the same for the bottom, and then the fabric, pretty easy. Batting is on and it's looking pretty good already. Now for the batting, I only stapled like the barest minimum of staples because the fabric's gonna go on and around and everything's gonna be nice and snug. So for the fabric, this side needs to come around and down here. So we need to staple that, making sure we leave enough room to staple this to this on both sides. 
We've got plenty of excess fabric on this side, so we're good. Oh my God, this is gonna look so good. Can you see the green legs? Can you see this awesome fabric? This chair is gonna be so nice after I go iron the fucking fabric. Now that I have my fabric ironed, I'm going to put a couple staples in just to hold this in place so that I don't get crooked and willy nilly when I'm shoving it into the crack in here. I'm gonna flip it like so. We're gonna do our holding staples. Perfect. Now I can flip it back over and start tucking everything into place. Trial and error. You like shove it in, fold it over, staple it down. Does it look okay? Yeah. I can now take it from here, loosen it so I can get my handy tool and then start shoving the fabric in, keeping the seat tight, tight, tight. This is where people are gonna be sitting. If you have loose fabric, then you're gonna get all wrinkly. I'm just shoving, shoving, shoving. Grab it from this back side, pull it tight and staple to the back. That's my plan. I don't know if it will happen, but that's my plan. Okay, it took me 8,000 years, but I finally got the fabric shoved in. So now we can see it from this backside here. This is my fabric that now I can take and staple to this piece of wood so that when you sit in it, this doesn't come forward and this doesn't come up. So, ugh. Perfect. I kept this all one solid piece. I didn't cut out a square for the seat and I didn't cut out a square for the back because I just thought that'd be too damn hard to shove two separate pieces of fabric between here. So they're just all one piece and I'm just stapling it in. Now this section here, I do wanna staple a lot of staples because there's gonna be a lot of tension when people sit in it. So I don't want it to come loose at all. Every inch, once I get the first set laid out. All right, look, I'm getting carried away now. Oh my gosh, look at that. Next, I need to do the seat sides. I'm going to staple those and then we got to figure out this ball of fabric. So ideally this would be nice and smooth. I just got to figure out how to make that as smooth as possible without fucking up my fabric. Okay, so here's my base wood. I'm going to take my fabric, pull it nice and tight, do a staple in the center, a staple in this corner, a staple as best as I can get it smooth, probably right here. Flip the chair, do the same to the other side. Maybe staple the back too and cut off the excess so I don't have a bunch of flailing fabric around. We're going to staple. Pull tight, staple, pull tight, staple. Thankfully, I didn't pick a stripe or anything that had a straight line pattern like squares or whatnot because that would be very hard. So when recovering a chair, think pattern. There, pull this side tight, 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 tight. Good, this is where it gets a little hairy. And then flip it and do the same to the other side. Golly. Look how cute and really tight. I can't stress that enough. Okay, flipping it. Out of nervousness, I did not cut any of the corner fabric. I just folded, pleated, folded, pleated, stapled, stapled, stapled. I think it looks pretty good. All I need to do now that I have this corner nice, staple along the bottom, do my front corners, which is just like, you know, you fold it like a package, boom, done. And then we gotta figure out the back. There's a couple ways. This back is completely open. So one way would be to take this whole piece of fabric and take it all the way down, stapling it to the very, very, very bottom edge. Then you're left with these like wing situations. So before you staple all of this down, you would take this extra fabric and pull it tight across the side, obviously cutting off your excess, but you get where I'm going. Make this a nice fold here and then staple down. Now, there were these things when I took off the peach fabric, almost like a metal tack strip, like a carpet tack strip, holding this nice seam edge down. I did find them at the Joann, so I did buy them. The other method is take this back fabric here, staple it to the top, cut it, so then you have a big square. Use a tack strip, 
fold it and do all edges. So the back piece would be one square that you plop on. I haven't quite decided what I'm gonna do to the back yet. Let's finish the sides. And actually it's getting kind of late. I got a late start and the pain in the legs took forever. And then I had to iron the fabric. But what I can get done is the seat part. We can cut off our excess fabric there and at least kind of look at it. All I have to do now is just fill in staples here. Pulling tightly, filling in as we go. Okay, so now all I need to do, take my corners, make a little present. I kind of like it to split so it starts like at a point and then I shove that in and then it makes that. Oh yeah, like that. That looks good to me. And then I'm gonna pull tight and staple. Yes, and now this one. Yeah, and then I hammer those in. And then we can finally cut off our excess fabric. Yes, look at that. So totally professional. Okay, so it is day three and we are back at it. We're gonna finish it today. I just have a feeling. Now all we have is to figure out what the hell we're doing with the back of this damn chair. I have these things that I was telling you about. 27 inch fiber tack strip. Now the ones I took off the chair originally were actually metal but I'm feeling like they were just metal back in the day and now they're made out of this and not metal. Never used them before. Don't know how they're gonna work out. There are zero directions in this tube or on this right here. It just tells us that they're tack strips for upholstery projects. We're doing an upholstery project, so yeah, let's use them. So they look like this, like crazy torture things. They had these metal naily teeth. And if I just go off of what was happening when I took apart the chair, they took, which I don't know how exactly, they took this, I don't know if they like shoved it in here. This was in like this, and then this was nailed down. We gotta figure that out. But I think our first agenda is get our side pieces stapled in so they're nice and tight, and then we can figure out what the hell is happening with that. We're just gonna pull this tight, staple, staple, staple. I'm not gonna do too many here, because if we do end up using this, I wanna make sure that they don't hit a staple when I put them in. All you upholstery people out there, you're like, you just do it like this. I'm sure. But see how this makes a nice crease anyways? So I'm thinking once we have this in between there, we just hammer, 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 and it will make a nice smooth thing there. That's what I'm thinking. In my head, it's gonna be beautiful. So let's see if that's the way it happens in real life. First, staple this shit. I stapled my sides on. They're all looking good. I did wrap the fabric around to the inside and I added some staples on the inside just for extra security. As I'm sitting here playing around with it, here's what I think. I will take this and smooth it and staple this close to the top edge of the chair. When I fold this down, that makes that nice crease that we like. That nice edge right there is exactly what I'm looking for to place this inside and then hammer. I think all we have to do, cut this to size basically. It's all a guessing game. And there's four in case we screw it up because we only need two. So that's a plus. I'm happy with the size. I have stapled my fabric across the top. What I'm nervous about when I'm putting this in here like so, how am I supposed to get the fabric super tight exactly how I have it when it's pulled down like that? Really, for my money, I wanna say, these things. Like, do I need to use those things? I'm so mad because I already cut one and I could have taken them back. Do you get where I'm going? Like, why wouldn't I just forego this whole situation and pull this really tight like this? I know, I know why. Because this happens and then you're like, oh, peekaboo, I get it. But I'm nervous as to how I'm supposed to put this in and make sure it's tight. That's my problem. I gotta figure this out. Okay, so what I, figured out slash decided this is a shit show. And for my money, I would just staple this, pull this tight, and then like run a beat of high glue along there. 
but we're not gonna do that. What I did is I did pull this side tight and just put like a holder staple at the bottom so that I knew at least this side was tight without any of this in it. And then that way I could kind of play with this side. So I have this in here and it's almost just like, I guess you just gotta go for it. It's difficult, I'm not gonna lie, this is difficult. I'll just take this out, even though I feel like I had it pretty perfect, but I'll just take this out and I'll show you what I did. Holder stapler in that side. So for this side, what I did, I like the way this looks. So I took my hand and I really creased this fabric as best as I could. I kind of used that very light crease in the fabric as my guide for where the edge of this piece needs to go. So without the nails poking it, I slid it in this away and then I flipped it so the nails were poking downwards. And then I just kind of was like, just go for it, lady. It's like a guessing game. I don't know how people that reupholster chairs did it. To me, that looks good. Now, if I start to fucking nail it all in, is everything gonna go to shit? I'm nervous, you guys, I'm not gonna lie. We've done so good on the chair so far, and if this gets fucked up, I'll be pissed. I mean, I guess there's nothing we can do but go for it, right? Where's my hammer? Let's try it. Oh my God, I'm so nervous right now. You're seeing nervousness live. I'm just going ever so gently. I feel like I'm a little off kilter right there. I need to move it, I think. Ah, son of a bitch. Uh -huh. I'm gonna take this one out and redo it a little bit better and fix this top nail. And then we're just gonna go for it. That, that's it, we're just gonna go for it and say <laughs> I could sit here and fuck with it for eight more hours. I think I have it as perfect as it's gonna get. There's nothing left to do but go for it. Just pound the fucker in and see what happens. Everybody, Cross your fingers. And I'm gonna back it up a little. Okay, good, good. Okay. All right, continuing to hammer. Okay. Actually, not bad. Now I'm gonna go re-hammer everything down so it's super tight. Okay, okay. Be careful. I snagged my fabric right there to put some fabric glue or something, but we did it. We did it, we did it. Okay, moral of the story is don't don't be afraid and fuck around with it for 12 hours because you can end up wrecking your fabric a little bit. Look it, I mean, it is a professional look. And then once we have this side pulled nice and tight and then the bottom will pull down, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just really mad about that little snag right there. No one's gonna know, but me and you guys. So don't say a word to anybody, okay? I'm gonna do this side and hopefully not be as scared about it. <sighs> okay, here's what I learned. Do not show fear when using these things. Okay, so the first side, I probably wouldn't have jacked up as much if I just were like, just fucking go for it. Because this side, I pulled it tight, I made my little crease, I stuck my thing in there, I got it all lined up with my crease, and then I said, it's good. And then I just hammered it, and it is good. And everything's tight. <sighs> I'm so excited. So now, all I need to do is pull this all tight, staple this, boom! And then we're done upholstering. We're freaking upholsterers, dude. And then we can put the arm slash legs on and be done. Yeah, so look, I mean, seriously, that's perfect. Just don't show fear. Just act like you know what you're doing, even if you don't, and it'll work out beautifully. I'm glad we did it and didn't use hot glue. I'll just be real honest. It was a little touch and go there. I'm not gonna lie. I was really nervous I was gonna fuck things up, but I didn't, and it looks really good. <laughs> okay, we did it. This is the chair from the front. It is amazing. Everything is nice and tight and I'm loving every second of it. From the side, super amazing as well. But the back is like so profesh. I mean, the whole thing is so profesh and so tight. But seriously, like a drum. I love it. I should have some spare fabric to just cut a square 
and then staple the under underneath so we don't see up in. But there's part of me that doesn't want to even do that. I mean, I'm sure I have a spare piece of like muslin. It doesn't have to be expensive fabric. You could even do like an old sheet, but I just want to put the legs on so bad. The thing that we have to do, because we covered up our holes on the side where the chairs screw in, we got to feel around for where the screw holes are and like mark them with a little baby pen. And where did I put the screws? Oh, that's a good one. Anyone? I have the chair on its side and I could feel this screw hole for certain. So I marked that and then I just took my leg and kind of lined this screw hole with that to get a general idea of where the rest of the screw holes would be. I don't want it to snag. So I'm gonna punch a little hole in the fabric so that when I screw it in, like it doesn't catch like it wants to do right there. So I'm just kind of like hand screwing through the fabric really. Perfect. Let's screw it in. And I'm not going to tighten it all the way so that I have flexibility to put the rest of the screws. So I'm going to screw the rest of this in. And then the next time you see the chair, it's going to be done. Okay. Are you ready for the big reveal of quite possibly the most amazing chair you have ever seen in your entire life? Sit down because you might pass out. Dun, 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 dun. Look at it. I love it. Don't forget, we found this on the side of the road. Someone threw this chair away. They were waiting for the garbage man to come get it. But I swooped in and beat the garbage man to it. Threw it in the back of my truck and said, this will be mine. And I will turn it into the most amazing treasure you have ever seen. And that's exactly what I did. And I love it so much. So yeah, pretty impressive what we can do with shit we find on the side of the road. And I wanted to do this because believe me, this is not the first time I've picked something up off of the side of the road. If I didn't love this so much and want to keep it, there is a small part of me every time I do make over something that I find on the side of the road, I kind of want to take it back. And maybe that's what we'll do because at some point, your house has enough GD furniture. There was another chair here that I am replacing with this one, but wouldn't it be fun to like find something on the side of the road that was somebody's, take a before picture of it, redo it, then go take it back to them with like the before picture like pinned to it with a note that was like, there was potential in this thing that you threw away. Here you go. Put it back in your house. I'm not doing it with this chair, I'll tell you that much, because this chair is mine now. I'm trying to remember. I can't remember. Let's just say the fabric cost me 10, 15 bucks. And then we bought that extra batting that was on sale, and that was like $5. So we're at $20. And then the paint, I don't know, how much does a quart of paint go for? 10 bucks. Those tack strip things, which actually worked out really well. I don't know why I was so damn nervous about them. I had just never used them before. I know we didn't spend more than 40 bucks. I'm telling you right now, it was not more than $40. For $40, seriously, take a look at the before and take a look at the after. Are you not dying right now? $40 for this amazing chair. And look, I'm sitting in it. It's extra sturdy now because you know, I made sure everything was screwed in nice and tight. It smells divine because I sprayed it with a bunch of disinfectant and shit. So point is, when you're driving down the road, it's mostly in neighborhoods. The towns do like a cleanup day and you can put everything you've been wanting to throw away but doesn't fit in your trash, you put it on the side of the road and then they'll come and pick it up. So people have like huge piles. There's usually like, you know, gross ass mattresses, lots of tree trimmings, but sometimes you find furniture pieces that people didn't want to have to go through the hassle of having a yard sale, didn't think they could sell it because it was in such bad shape, what have you. So what I'm saying is when you're driving down the street and you go, Back it up, back it up. Take a look at it. Get out of the car, wiggle it around. If it doesn't look too gross or too beat up or basically just needs some TLC, a little sanding, a little paint, maybe a little fabric if it's a chair, grab that shit. You never know what you could turn it into. I wish my skincare Saturdays before and after turned out as amazing as this trash to treasure chair before and after, cause seriously. And it was 40 bucks or less and a weekend. 
don't pass shit up on the side of the road is the moral of this story. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to ring that notification bell so that you do not miss out on any of the DIY Wednesdays I push out, which are every other Wednesday at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. Make sure you share this video with your family and friends, especially those ones that are really into turning something trashy into something that they will treasure for the rest of their lives. And as always, thanks for hanging out.